Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I just poured myself an afternoon cup of coffee and sometimes I do that just because I can and um, you know, even when it's hot, you know, when I was growing up, by the way, when I was growing up, uh, for those of you that, that have people tell you coffee is bad for you, when I was growing up, and this is in, this is in South Georgia where in the summertime it's 90 to 100 degrees in the daytime, okay? Or worse, when I was growing up, my grandparents, who were probably in their 70s and 80s while I was growing up, they would drink hot coffee on their screen porch in the middle of the day on a, in the summertime. They, they had a pot of coffee on day, all day long, every day, their whole life. <laughs> that was just what they did. And they never had any kind of issues from it. So I always wondered if all that... Um, uh, decaf stuff was just a bunch of garbage. Um, and really it came down to luck of the draw as far as your DNA or your, um, genes. Anyway, enough of that. I'm drinking coffee right now. Ellie, this is from the cryptic poet. Ellie Powell just announced that they will allow XRP holders to receive the spark token airdrop. So now Ellie, pa Ellie Powell is working on integration and they are a hard wallet similar to a ledger nano S. I've never used one before. Now, the OCC came out with this report, and all of you should pay attention to this because this is coming. OCC reports decline in mortgage performance. Um, how could this not happen? This came out from the OCC today. The percentage of seriously delinquent mortgages, mortgages that are 60 or more days past due, and all mortgages held by bankrupt borrowers who payment, whose payments are 30 or more days past due, increased by 5.4% from the previous quarter and 5.3% from a year ago. Now, the only thing that surprises me about this is why is that 5.4% instead of some crazy number like 50% is what it should be? Because people, how many, I mean, how long has Congress been dragging around about giving people any kind of relief? Makes you, makes you wonder if this problem is far, far worse than what people are seeing yet. I believe it is. And I also believe this from Forbes, the coming sovereign debt crisis will boost cryptocurrencies. There's not a doubt in my mind on this. You can imagine what this article is about. I just wanted to read you the last paragraph. While the default for many countries such as Lebanon has been, uh, has been to get the USD as a store of value against the lower value of their domestic countries, the weaker US dollar and reckoning over the USD's position in the global balance of currencies may soon change this dynamic. If cryptocurrencies can find a way to enter the discussion and take this spot, then the macroeconomic trend of sovereign debt will help provide support and powerful reason for new adoption around the world. You better believe it. Now, Zero Hedge, JP Morgan to pay record $1 billion settlement over precious metals treasury manipulation. Well, nobody significant is going to go to jail over this. This is how it works for the people that are in the club. They get to pay large fines, usually um, in a roundabout way. The government has handed them the money by virtue of their having the word bank on their building, and they're able to basically pay a fine with money that was more or less handed to them anyway. Isn't that a great racket? So there's nothing to see here. They, they manipulated um, precious metals for Lord knows how long and probably continue to do it, but they're going to get a little slap on the wrist with money that the government more or less handed them anyway. So... Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. And then these are the same people who go on television to tell us that crypto is money laundering and for nefarious purposes, they lie out through their teeth while they're on the other side buying crypto. This is how they play the game. Perfect Symmetry sent me this. This is big. Volante Technologies collaborates with Goldman Sachs to launch digital transaction banking in the cloud. This is big, folks. The global leader in cloud payments and financial messaging today announced that Volante has been collaborating with Goldman Sachs 
to provide the payments technology underpinning the bank's recently launched digital transaction banking service built entirely from scratch in the cloud and industry first. Volante has also become a client of the platform. Now, as the, my father, the official father of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, has said to me on multiple occasions, nothing happens without Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and the boys. That's just the way life works. Well, what does this have to do with Ripple, Volante and Goldman Sachs? Well, it has a lot to do with Ripple. At the, this is from Volante Technologies Today. At the core of the Goldman Sachs transaction banking platform is Volante's cloud-native Volpay providing end-to-end -end processing of domestic and international payments, including FX, across U.S. wires, ACH, SWIFT, cross-border payments, and other payment rails. Well, let me show you some and other. This is from Roses on the Moon. Let me break it down for you. Ripple is now indirectly working with Goldman Sachs through Volante. Don't believe me? Here's the press release that we just showed you, and here's the graphic. The Volpay Ripple Processor Module, and it shows you Look, fees and FX rate quote, and then the tweet said, including FX. And how many times have we heard cross-border payments and other payment rails? Yeah. Ripple, payment sent, confirmation of payment settlement. Ripple's all about some vol pay, and I can show you that too. This is Chris Larson and Monica Long of Ripple. Uh, lot, lots of interest in Ripple. Ready vol pay at Valenti. Vijay Odiraju Valenti, Chris Larson, and Monica Long. This is way back October 13th of 2015, before Digital Ledger and blockchain was cool. And they were laying the foundation way back then. And then there was this. This is from Bank XRP. Listen to what this guy says. This is this V. Parak Hab Hakar, VP, Product Marketing, Valenti Technologies. Um, it's not just about cost reduction. It's also about the fact that banks today have to deal with a lot more different kinds of payment types, real-time payments, new cross-border settlement methods like Ripple and GPI. And on the front end, they've got to deal with open banking, APIs, uh, and really like becoming Ripple and GPI. So let's go back to this. Um, so they're going to be going through SWIFT with SWIFT to GPI, cross-border payments, FX, Let's go back to his little video here. You added service providers. Let's take into account. Exactly. <laughs> so Let's providers. take into account. Uh, hold on. Okay, sorry, here the earphones went out. Here we go again. Eyes, uh, and really becoming value added service providers. Let's take into account. Exactly. <laughs> so as a result, the agility that moving to a service model brings, uh, the speed that cloud brings, uh, is if it were just those things, that would be enough. Uh, but the fact that the cloud also is now more secure uh, than a typical bank data center and uh, performs better, really when you put all those things together, uh, it's a huge win for payments as a service provider. It's a really exciting development. Um, it's not just about... All right, so there you go with Volante. Uh, bon Krip sent me this. The world's largest virtual blockchain conference is now free. LA Blockchain Summit kicks off October 6th to 7th online with the blockchain industry's most innovative thought leaders to determine the next decade of cryptocurrencies and blockchain tech. You should all go register for this. I wanted to show you some of the people that are going to be there. Tim Draper, who I talked to last week. Um, that'll be interesting. Hester Pierce, crypto mom the, from the SEC. Let's go down and see if we can. There's the co-founder of Tezos. There's Brian Brooks, the acting controller of the crypto of the currency. Right beside Chris Larson, co-founder and executive chairman of Ripple. And he's right beside Tom Emmer, who a week or two ago in the comp online conference with Brad Garlinghouse said that he doesn't think XRP is a security. Then we've got the CEO of Binance. The names go on and on. Um, there's Justin Sun from Tr Tron. Heath Tarbert from the CFTC. There's Catherine Coley from Binance. There's the CEO of Ledger that makes the Ledger Nano S. There's Rand Nooner from what used to be the CNBC crypto um, show. I'm going to kind of go through these and see if I can find anybody else um, that's interesting to me or you. Well, here's o OpenSea. This is Devin Finzer, the CEO and co-founder of OpenSea. That's the company that sells those unstoppable domains on a secondary market. 
Let's go keep going down, see if we can find anybody interesting. I know there's a lot of people. Um, let's see if I see anybody that, that I recognize. I went through this earlier, and I know that there's some. I'm trying to find one or two that I know I can remind you of. I might head on down to the bottom. If I don't, oh, here's JP Tirrett from, he's the CEO of Uphold. We've talked about him a lot. Um, then we've got, as we go down, let's see, am I missing anybody? I know, I know there's one that I'm going to show you that I, that I don't want to miss. Wait a minute. That's Anchorage down here at the bottom. Let me just, let me just speed on to the bottom and I'm going to show you. Oh, Jed McCaleb from Stellar and the CEO and executive director of Stellar. Um, they're there. I wonder if, since he's such an enemy of Chris Larson's, I wonder if they can make up and maybe cut some business deals. That's what we're supposed to think, right? Um, also, Pamela Clegg from Cypher Trace. This, if you'll remember, is the lady who those guys that were on Bitcoin Ben's show, she's the one that said um, that that Ripple was going to replace Swift in the next one to two, one to three years or so. And then we have over here an interesting character, Charles Bavar Bavard. He is the VP of content at Quantum Economics. What is that? I just saw his name here. I just was curious what Quantum Economics what might be. Uh, analysis, advisory, money, money, money management. Um, let's see. What does... What is quantum economics? Well, let's watch the video and see what they say. I hadn't and watched welcome this. welcome back just... to AIBC Summit TV. Now, it's been a crazy week in the market. This has been one of the first videos of the new year that I'm bringing to you. So, happy new year, first of all. And what a time to record a video. We've seen some really interesting moves in the market. So, joining me on the line is none other than Matty Greenspan, founder of Quantum Economics. Matty, it's great to talk to you today. Thanks for having me. Now, what we've seen in the markets is... Okay, that's the same guy from eToro, I believe. But it says here, it says, financial markets and money itself are going through a quantum leap. How dare they use that word quantum? But anyway, uh, I'm not going to go any further into that. I just wanted to show you that. All right, at Dave6971 sent me this. Zero hedge. There still appears, This is from the other day. There still appears to be some confusion about the end game. The Fed itself spelled it out. The Fed is planning to send money directly to Americans in the next crisis. Now, they put out an article today on Zero Head. You got, I'm going to have to read this bottom part to you because this might blow your mind. It says, so this morning, as, as if to confirm our speculation of what comes next, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester delivered a speech to the Chicago Payment Symposium titled Payments in the Pandemic, in which after going through the big picture boilerplate, Mester goes straight to the matter at hand. In the section titled Central Bank Digital Currencies, the Cleveland Fed President writes that the experience with the pandemic emergency payments has brought forward an idea that was already gaining increased attention as, at central banks around the world. That is Central Bank Digital Currency CBDC. Never let a crisis go to waste, right, folks? And in the shocking punchline, then goes on to reveal that, quote, legislation has proposed that each American have an account at the Fed in which digital dollars could be deposited as liabilities of the Federal Reserve Banks, which could be used for emergency payments. But wait, it gets better because in launching digital cash, the Fed would then be able to scrap anonymous physical currency entirely and track every single banknote from its creation all through the various transactions that take place during its lifetime, and eventually the Fed could remotely destroy said digital currency when it so decides. Now, I want to read the bold, the things in bold print here just so you can. But in a digital form and potentially without the anonymity of physical currency, depending on how these currencies are designed, central banks could support them without the need for commercial bank involvement via direct in issuance into the end user's digital wallets combined with central bank facilitated transfer and redemption services. The Federal Reserve Bank of Boston is also engaged in multi-year effort working with the Massachusetts Institute of Technology to experiment with technologies that could be used for a central bank digital 
currency. The Federal Reserve Bank of New York has established an innovation center in partnership with the BIS to identify and develop in-depth insights into critical needs and financial technology of relevance to central banks. What in the world could they be talking about, folks? Maybe what we've been talking about for over two years on this channel. Maybe that's exactly what they're talking about. Okay, yesterday, Chris Larson tweeted this. As some of you may know, I showed you this. Some of you may have noticed I moved an XRP wallet to NYDG, and he went on to talk about how this was custody 2.0. And then, just like on cue, I get this from James Rule XRP, NYDIG announces senior executive appointments. So these, so Chris Larson says that yesterday, and all of a sudden, these guys are now in the news. Um, says they, um, it says they, and other, they've hired former Goldman Sachs partners Ronnie Wexler and Tejas Shah, and managing director Eric Kramer and veteran fintech analyst Greg Cipollaro to join the fir firm in executive roles. So it looks to me like they have just rolled out, rolled out their platform, and they're ready to roll. Is what it looks like to me. Now, uh, James Rule XRP also made me aware of two things. Polysign has filed a patent, and they've updated their. It looks to me like an update of their trademark. Polysign. I should be whispering that. But if you go down, it looks like they um, filed this trademark in 2018, and then just yesterday a notice of approval of extension request email. So these guys, it looks like they extended their trademark. I don't know what, if I'm not sure exactly what that means. Then on um, July 16th of 2020, PolySign fi filed this patent application, preventing a transmission of an incorrect copy of a record of data to, to a distributed ledger system. Now I kind of skimmed this and it was all kind of, you know, mumbo jumbo boring talk. I just wanted to show you who who's on the patent. David Schwartz, Arthur Brito, Anna Tong, Kaiman Papadopoulos, William Morris, Shiranjeeb Kataki, Eric Rodriguez, Connor Hanrahan, whatever that whatever that name is. Um so anyway they've you know Poly Sun is alive and well and we sh we could hear something significant from them any second now folks like as in going live. All right, I got two um two people sent me their uh, some examples of some unstoppable domains that they got. First James Rule and then uh Steve Golbronson and his wife. These are James Rules here and these are the Golbronsons. Gulfcoastfishing.crypto. I love that one. City of San Antonio.crypto. That's a good one. NHRA Drag Racing, another good one. And then the Goldbronsons got purchase tickets.crypto and City of Cincinnati.crypto. If you have not gone and gotten your unstoppable domains, it's not just a payment domain that you get when you buy one of these for 40 bucks. You also get a, a, a web, you, you have a, it's basically a website. My understanding is a website that cannot be taken down. It's decentralized website. How cool is that? Um, this is in the description of every video I do. If you want to go um, try try your hand, all you got to do is type in some different names in this thing and see if they're available. If, if you find if you get lucky and find a good one, they're only forty bucks. In the description of all my videos, there's a link. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family that you have an unstoppable domain and they don't. Na-na-na-boo-boo. -boo. Thank you for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked, ridiculed, laughed at, and embarrassed by their friends, family, and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free digital asset investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com.
put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.